I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I feel pretty haggard after not brushing my teeth or showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Wow, kid. Okay, wise guy, are you, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left, can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Hmm? Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Uh, fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be hard. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in hmm. this. All right, where were we? Now, you, now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rock? Um. Oh, he's an English teacher, just like my husband. Yes, Colin. My husband's name is Colin. Wow. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, my husband's a, a, an English teacher. And he just said, yes, Colin. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Dame. Colin stands up and does a thing. What a swap, right? Does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right. All right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa! Remember to do the reading and answer the questions on page 194 in your textbook. 493. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Yeah, my husband teaches middle school English, too. Don't you teach high school? I don't know. I don't know. Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please, call me Hugo. Hmm. I don't normally do these, these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Oh? What's going on? <sighs> Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and have been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. And that even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to, to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm? See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Hmm? Yes? Did they ever catch that rye? Oh. <laughs> yes. I didn't even make a choice if he, like, I didn't even make a choice and he was like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of pos for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about her celebrity crushes. So, you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? 
It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to the mall, mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Mm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? <laughs> will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Mm. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find out that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm -hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Ah. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Yeah. It's fine. He's fine. We pull to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. I mean, she's a teenager. Uh, I heard Amanda M M R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Oh, she's, she's like this press. That's why. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh... I don't think you get it. Okay. Who you texting? Noah? Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? <sighs> yep. Do you like Noah? <gasps> what? No! Dad? Ugh. I can't believe you would... Aww. Dad? I mean, geez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. I know guys and girls can be friends. That's why I was curious. I'm just curious. If you're just friends, fine. If you like each other, fine. <sighs> okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall. A big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a small security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. All right. Yeah. Language Missy. Mm. Heck yeah. Better. Huh? We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Yeah, but well, we were worked out a bunch this morning, so it balances out, right? Nobody looks happy to be the hair to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. I would make that I it would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, oh. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <sighs> Which meme? All? All memes? Aww. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Dad. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us youths have already done the joke to death. Ouch. Aww. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and isn't funny. 
That's very true. Our my daughter is very bright. What up? Ugh. Dad, please. Oh. Anyway, change the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to the that goth store? That goth store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment? I... I don't know what story you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Mm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in at that one time? Oh, that one. Hey! Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Ah. There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so... proud? Speech! Amanda... Yeah. Speech! 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 Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting! Ah. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Angel had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Yeah. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond, dead goth and beyond, I love that. <laughs> To buy a rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. Amanda's moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other plat patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at the band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in the dead, in dead goth and beyond. Peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. I like ironic mugs. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I really received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Oh, wow, this guy. Whatever, dude. The man rolls around and storms out his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Uh -huh. Hey, Dadtron 5000? Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt into the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier... The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So, what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes. Oh, it says it was a woman. Whoops, the cashier rolls her eyes. So hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool, Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Trucker is on! Your favorite, right? Yes, they have to make it over the Canadian Tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also- but they're hunting ghosts? The creativity in this game. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghosts done got control of the truck! I can't steer them there, ice roads! Let me use this ever 
EVP meter to try and communicate with these spirits. Flint, what if you were about to die? I almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. <laughs> this is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Nice. I stay up a little longer. Curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint, Dogbone, after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Medicine is not always the best medicine. I'm sleeping again. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly? Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? I do. Especially when I'm providing food. I, you can bet I show up on time. You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Interest good to know. Hmm. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here! And you brought veggies! And you were wearing the exact same outfit as the other day! But that's cool. Hmm. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over. This is Chris, my eldest. Oh. Hi. Hmm. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins, more twins. Ah. They stare creepily and say nothing. Look just like they take after their mom. Oh. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in this crib. Ah, Mary. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Yeah, I, I, I knew game, I figured. Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek, she smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Mm. I'll have to go look for him. Mm. What, you'll have to. <laughs> Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Hark and his daughter, Amanda. Mm. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Wow, lady. I love her. <laughs> Amanda, nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that, sh what, that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in the new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Oh. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. I love me some deviled eggs. Just the other day I made some crab, some crab ragoon deviled eggs. Mwah. So good. Amanda grabbed a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Dad. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. He doesn't really strike me as a shy kind of person, though. I'm kind of surprised by this. It feels a little out of character based on what he automatically says. Hmm. Dad. 
Ugh, they're gonna talk about weather. Aww. Go, do it, make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child? It's a social function. That's bad parenting. Yeah. This, this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the, the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? <laughs> hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Talk to Robert and Brian. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Talk to Joseph and Damien. Burger time. I'm going to talk to Joseph and Damien. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Gath and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. This is cool. Like, you're actually interacting with, you know, sets of, sets of guys. So, I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting choice. Ah. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Oh. Hark, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Ah. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second, I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Ah! Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself a goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would be more describe myself as twee hipster with some nor norm core leanings. Bats are cool, though. Ah, ah pity. Huh? Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Uh. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as God? Hmm. That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your surface. Bloodmarch, eh? Damien finishes a sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Wow, this guy is super theatrical. <laughs> Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Huh. My, do you know how to treat a lady? <gasps> Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Whoa. Uh, hey, won't you come play with us? Oh, gosh. Huh? Uh, come play with us forever. Is this game doing this on purpose? <sighs> okay. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Uh. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Uh. Mary hops into the conversation. Wine in hand. I, um, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of her wine. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Uh. Where's Chris? <sighs> Wasn't he with you? You had him a moment ago. Oh my gosh, this woman. Oh my gosh. Oh, this woman is frustrating me to no end. As someone who, like, is desperately trying to have a child, the fact that she's neglecting hers really irks me. Uh. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddles are pretty resilient. Oh my gosh, you have you don't care about any of your kids or your husband. You're a terrible woman. Terrible person. 
Merry tips are glass to me. Mm. Ain't my first time to do the rodeo. Yep. It's my fifth. <sighs> I have squeezed four little. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Hmm. I'm sure he's fine. <sighs> Mary. Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Bye, Felicia. Dad, can we go now? Huh. Oh, Lucian is Damien's kid. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Hark yet? We have a son now. Well, single son. Hey, it's that punk from Amanda School. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Mm. Coming right up. But, but, are you vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Hmm, hmm. I'm wondering if he has psychic abilities too. Oh, no, wait, that's for vegans. That's for vegans, not vegetarians. Dad. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns on the grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Maybe he was a Navy guy. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Hey. Yep, I always, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. Mm. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? See, that's good dad. That's good parenting. Like, not making a scene in front in public with everybody. Waiting till later to yell at your kid. Wait till to scold your kid, not in front of everybody. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Mm. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful though, the number cat number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler, a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Probably was a Navy guy. Talk to Robert and Brian. Talk to Matt Hugo and Craig. Let's talk to Matt Hugo and Craig. Um Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled with, in an intense discussion. Why is it the people of color are all together? Is that on purpose? Put the people of color together in one corner and all of the other, I don't know. Now I feel really awkward. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to make something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't need notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Craig is so adorable. He always has this kid with him. Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, because he's being left out right now. I feel bad for him. I turn my attention to Craig, who seemed a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Mm -hmm. Great, Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grab, grabs River's arms and waves them around. Oh. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. Hey. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Oh. I'm so sorry for throwing up on you, on you, Dad. Hmm. How are you settling in? Almost done. The new place is perfect. I never get too comfortable. Almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Hmm. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that I didn't involve that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Park, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Some more friendly than others. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. 
Matt points across the yard to where a band that Daisy and another girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into the little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. 